Well, I think we're 30 seconds early, but I guess that doesn't matter. <laughs> Good morning, and again, it's a delight to come and share with you. It's a lovely day out there. The sun is shining, although it's windy, but it's pleasantly warm. And it's definitely warm and friendly in here, so whatever the storms might do outside. This uh, past weekend, I was in Ottawa. I took one of my grandsons to Ottawa. He's wanting to move there next year, and uh, we went up to, to uh, do some stuff up there. And uh, his, his, he's just got a beginner's license, so he couldn't help with the driving. So the only thing is, I had had him as a prisoner for over 14 hours in the car, so he had to listen to me for seven hours there and seven hours back again. Our opening song this morning is uh, Bringing in the Sheaves. This past week, I discovered that that was based on Psalm 126, verse 6, which I didn't know. It says, God, who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I didn't realize that that was based on a Bible verse. So. <clears throat> Our 
scriptures today. There's two of them, both from Matthew. First one, Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, and Matthew 28, 16 to 20. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under the feet of people. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Let your light so shine before people that they may see your good works and, give, and glorify your Father in heaven. And then the last verses of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. Then Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. The Word of God. We do talk about sharing the good news, and sometimes it comes across almost as a terrible, big, heavy job to share the good news. And the good news is sharing the good news is good news. And it's not hard work. Those verses in Matthew chapter 5 are really important, and I think sometimes we just miss some of the wonder of them. You are the salt of the earth. Salt doesn't make itself. It just is. It says you are the light of the world. It also says in another place that Jesus is the light of the world. That's in the Gospel of John. You are the light of the world. People can see you from a distance. You don't have to get your big, heavy Bible and pound people on the head like Billy Sunday used to. No, actually, he never beat people on the head, but he would grab them by the shoulders and shake them if they didn't want to start believing in Jesus right away. He was very passionate. But we don't need to do that in order to spread the good news. It says that people will see our good works and they will glorify God. So that sharing the good news, instead of being a big, heavy job, should be fun. I mean, I think living for Jesus is, well, I wouldn't call it fun. It gives us a life of peace, but it can be sometimes far from fun in the social sense. But the Spirit is in us and lives out through us like a light. So that if we turn the switch, the lights come on. Well, we don't have to turn each bulb on. We just turn the switch. Well, at least somebody does. <laughs> Stephen's here getting us ready all the time. And so this is what sharing the good news is. Just living with Jesus every day, every moment of every day. And yes, if somebody asks a question of you or you have a chance to say something nice about God, that's okay. But we aren't under some kind of great heavy burden that we have to do something for Jesus every moment. We just have to live with Jesus and people can see that. It's kind of like, I think, in some ways, the military. 
you never know all the names of all the soldiers in all the trenches. We will know some because we read about them. Some of them might have been relatives. But who we do know is the general hitting the battle. And the general, in that sense, gets all the credit for winning or all the abuse for losing. Even though it's the soldiers in the trenches that win or lose the battle. But we remember the general. And so it is in the Christian life. Jesus is the general. In fact, in the Old Testament, God is called Lord of Hosts in the King James Bible. But uh, it actually, in modern language, we would be called Field Marshal or Battle General. Hosts is a Hebrew word for armies. Not for crowds of people, but for armies. And so we are in the army of the Lord, if you want to put it that way. And we hope that God gets a lot of credit for the good that the soldiers are doing. So we live our lives letting God flow into us and through us. And yes, sometimes we get a chance to say something good. And we'll take the chance when it comes. But we aren't compelled to speak to 20 people a day about becoming Christians. I mean, if you are called to do that, please go ahead and do that. But that's not our real calling for the good news. Live with Jesus. Jesus is real. And sometimes I think Jesus becomes kind of an idea instead of a real being in our lives. And then at the end of Jesus' ministry, it says Jesus told them to go to Galilee. And they got there and they gathered and they waited. And then it says Jesus came to them and spoke to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. That we serve the one who has the final authority, the final say in everything. And so it said, because I have the authority in heaven and earth, go. Go and make disciples of all the nations and baptize them and teach them. So we make disciples, we baptize, and we teach. Now, almost everybody's taught somebody something, whether it's baking in the kitchen or in a classroom, or wherever it is. I enjoyed the time that I was teaching at university. Uh, especially appreciated people coming into the seminary as a second or third career. You know, they were old people like me. Because the young people, when they came into seminary, the question they would ask would be, what do I need to do to get an A? And I would just say, 10 classes and do your work. <laughs> but but the people came in with life experience. We'd be talking about something, and they'd look at me and say, why is that important? Which is a wonderful question. Because then it gives you a chance to get the meat of what it is to teach you, and not just facts and figures. And so all Jesus wants us to do is walk in faith. Let the Holy Spirit through and live as though every moment mattered. And I will close with this. I don't know how many times in my years, decades of ministry, that people come to me and say, like, I don't know how to share my faith. How I, I didn't go to university. Some of them didn't even finish high school. How do I convince people that God is real. And my answer was always the same every time. Tell your own story. You don't need a PhD to tell your own story. And there's no point in you telling somebody else's story in a way because it's their story. You've got a story of what you've seen God do and what you've heard God say 
how you experience God. That's just being light, just being salt. That's all it is. Amen. Oh God, you know even better than us what struggles so many people have in the world and how those struggles sometimes draw them to you and sometimes they use them as an excuse to run away from you. But help us, God, just to walk our day with you, to let you shine through us. For you are the light of the world, and you make us the light of the world. We pray for those people who are struggling because you're talking to them, and you want to win them over, and you want them to say yes. We pray for them. We pray that their hearts and souls might be softened by the work of the Spirit, that they would say yes and know what it is to live a life of faith, to have peace that passes all understanding. And we pray, O oh God, for those people who have already said yes, those among us and those around us and those in our families. May they rediscover the joy of serving Jesus, that they would know that all they need is tiny, tiny faith to be able to live their lives for you. We pray, O oh God, for those people who serve other people, whether they're politicians or work in restaurants or work in homes or on the street or wherever it is that they work, God. We thank you for them and for their time doing that. And we ask you to bless them. May we be the light of the world and the kindness that we can show to one another in our attitude of, of peacefulness. Grant to us that we might speak words of kindness and building people up. And that when we feel anger or frustration or condemnation or judgment, please give us a zipper to close our mouths. Our God, we thank you that we have this time to gather together, that we are your family of God here at the Oaks. All of us carry prayers in our hearts and minds, and we lift them to you, O oh God, together, sharing the burden of one another as we pray for family, as we pray for healings, as we pray for truth. We thank you, O oh God, that we can share each other's prayers. And now we share the prayer that Jesus gave to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Go in peace. Amen.